Mac, a new lineup of Apple products on the way. Apple announcing the iPhone 13 with Mini, Pro, and Pro Max models. Also a new iPad and iPad Mini and the Apple Watch Series 7. Joining me right now is Disruptive Tech Research Founder and Chief Analyst Lou Bassanis. Lou, it's great to see you. Thanks very much. I was interested Anytime. in hearing your thoughts on this new rollout. Uh, you say Apple events are all about in t iteration, not innovation now. Tell me about that. Yeah, look, I think there's a false narrative that if Apple doesn't keep majorly innovating that the stock's going to die. And that's just not true. I mean, Tim Cook came out yesterday and said, look, the iPhone changed the world. And he's categorically right. It did change the world. And now they're just continuing to improve that world. They don't need to change it again. Uh, if you look at the balance of the event yesterday with from the iPhone to the iPad to the new watch, they just incrementally improve things. Faster processors, um, you know, bigger screens, better resolution. It's just incremental improvements to entice us to upgrade and with over a billion users, that's a very profitable business if they just get enough of us to upgrade each time they come out. And look, I mean, we're humans. We have a novelty preference. We like what's new and shiny. And I bet you we're going to see a record year for Apple iPhone sales again, uh, even though that there's no massive killer innovation that a lot of the critics are going to point to that, hey, Apple's just not innovating so anymore. Where's Steve Jobs? Yeah, it's interesting that you think that we'll still buy upgraded and, and new products, even though it's not sort of a game changer like the iPhone uh, initially was, um, you still think that we're going to just keep upgrading. Well, you're probably right because well, well, look at, look at history though, sometimes right? when you buy a new product, you have a new, you have a new plug too. You got to get the new plug. So there are little gimmicks in there to force us to spend more money, right? Yeah, I mean, look at look at history, right? I mean, Apple's been upgrading and improving incrementally. How many models are on the iPhone 13? I mean, no one wins betting against Apple. Look at the stock price under Tim Cook. Mm -hmm. I mean, the business is booming. The stock's up almost a thousand percent since he took the helm. And, you know, people were really critical saying, how can you replace Steve Jobs? I mean, if I'm Tim Cook, I'm printing out a, a picture of the stock chart and just slapping it up on the window saying, you know, how do you like them, Apple? Because <laughs> yeah. he's just done an amazing yeah, that's job. True. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. How do you like them apples? I like that. So let's talk semiconductors for a second, because you say the semiconductor market remains the most important one to investors as technology is being incorporated into every aspect of your life. And you're right. Um, but there's been a big shortage of semiconductors because of the supply chain uh, disruptions. What are your thoughts on growth in the semiconductor market? Yeah, if you look, I mean, Apple underscored the, the, the importance here. They talked all about their own chips the, and how they're developing that. If you look, even though we had the, have the supply shortages, growth in 31 out of 32 segments of the, the chips market is supposed to be up by double digits this year, according to IC Insights. And if you think about it, we, everything we do has a chip inside of it. So you're looking at a, a market that's worth $500 billion, that's growing, uh, doing over a, a trillion units each year. If you think technology is going to be more pervasive in the future, which I think everyone believes, that just means more chips everywhere. Forget the, you know, the Internet of Things. It's just the Internet of Chips. Um, I think you got to play pick and shovel plays. So you, you, you focus on companies that make the, the equipment or the technologies that improve chips across the spectrum. Uh, so it's like a company like Ram, uh, Lam Research Corp, LRCX, or, you know, one of my favorites is uh, Atomera. They've, they created a technology that improves uh, the performance of chips across the board from the, the analog lagging edge all the way to the bleeding edge. But I think for every investor, you have to have exposure um, to the chip sector and not just individual chip companies like an NVIDIA where you're betting on one or two trends like AI or, uh, you know, Bitcoin mining. You have to have ones that cover all the growth trends because, frankly, there's just so many tech trends that are growing at double digit, triple digit rates that you need exposure to all of them and not just one or two. Do we know if the supply is continuing to be disrupted? Where are we on this issue? Because it's held up a lot of products, impacted consumer sales, uh, because yeah. a lot of products need those chips. It, it continued. I think we're probably going to another, another six to 12 months. I mean, it takes time for these fabs uh, and the chip mm. makers to implement changes that will improve capacity. Uh, it's not something you can just flip a switch on. I mean, it's, it's analogous to the commodities markets, right? Like when we have a, a decline in demand for oil, we can't just flip a switch on when, when demand picks up and, and recover those supplies. So it takes some time. I think it, th those kinks get worked out. You're going to see production of chips move out of Taiwan and China some, to some extent just because of this. Uh, the companies don't want to be ex yeah. completely reliant on those manufacturing uh, countries. So I think, yeah, in the balance of time in six to 12 months, we're not going to be talking about a chip shortage. We're going to be just focusing on the boom in chip sales again. 
Yeah, I agree with you on the independence of that. We're still waiting on that kind of independence when it, as it relates to pharmaceutical products, since many of our 90 uh, percent of major pharmaceutical products are still made in China. Uh, Lou, good to see you. Thanks very much. You too, Lou Bethany is joining Anytime. us this morning on Tech.